Good day, brothers and sisters, wherever you are tuned in. We appreciate the Lord so much, the way he has led us. For those who are in East Africa, it is uh, 3 minutes to 8 p.m. in the night. I know in some other parts, in Australia, people are going to sleep. In the USA, people are uh, almost at midnight. And uh, in some other parts, people are waking up. And so, wherever you are tuned in, uh, I welcome you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, the Lord is good, and uh, he has been blessing us uh, as a people, as a ministry, as a family, as an individual. We I just give him thanks for everything that he is doing. We started the response to the CKC on the document it puts out to be used in the CAM meeting. And um, this is the document that uh, has been put outside there. And uh, like us to see uh, to look at it and this is the response we are making this is the document that uh, has been put outside there by Pastor Jeremy Mwenda Marambi the Central Kenya Conference and the CAM meeting Bible study the Bible study for the CAM meeting, Lessons 2019, uh, there is a section, the attack on the doctrine of the Godhead. I went through the first pages or the first day, yesterday, the concept of the Trinity. I didn't finish it up because it was finishing with Matthew chapter 28 verses 19 and i'll read it from matthew chapter 28 from verse 18 and so on day one pastor jeremy marambi says trinity is in matthew chapter 28 verse 19 as you can see it on your screens the people who are watching or the people who are listening he says, although the word Trinity is not in the Bible, the question we should ask is whether the doctrine of the Trinity as a numerical three is in the Bible with reference to divine beings. Throughout his theological and biblical number, three explicates the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, summarizes the threefold name, and uh, I'll be coming to this point later. Therefore, he says, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That is what Pastor Marambi actually says and quotes the verse there. And so i like us to get into the second response, Matthew chapter 28, verses 19, but I'll read from verses 18 and cover it through verses 20. And so let us bow for a word of prayer as we uh, seek the Lord to give us his spirit so that we may be able to uh, look in his word. Our Father which art in heaven, we thank you for this time of sharing. Lord, we want just to speak that which is written in thy word and in inspiration and help us, Lord, to speak what is truth and to speak it in a simple way that even a child will understand. And so thank you, Jesus Christ, for the gift. And thank you, Father, for promising that um, you will be able to guide us in all truth. And this we have asked in faith, believing that you have answered our prayers. For we pray in the precious name of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so let us measure what the pastor has put out on Matthew chapter 28 by saying that three always replicates the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, th there is no way that we can say that all the every time three appears in the Bible, 
Actually, it speaks of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I'll not go in detail to showing this because it is a strawman argument. Actually, it is not even something to be addressed. But I'll address the core issue that Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, proves uh, a trinity. So I, I, I invite you to a journey in looking at the book of Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, where actually the pastor has said this actually represents trinity. And uh, uh, we are not doing this because we have uh, uh, anything against anyone, but uh, we are doing this in the spirit of knowing the truth and what the word of God asks us. Uh, we are doing this in the spirit of knowing what is truth and not on attacking uh, 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 personalities. And so uh, uh, let us go to the book of uh, Matthew chapter 28, verses 18, going down to uh, verses 20. Notice carefully, this is after Jesus had resurrected, went to heaven, and now he came back unto his disciples, and he tells them, then the eleven, starting from 16, the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them, and when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. So what actually did uh, the book of Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 going down is dealing with is the power that has been invested in the Son of God. He says that all power has been given unto me. He is not here... Uh, 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 endorsing the doctrine of Trinity, the doctrine of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. What he is doing here, he is speaking of the power he has received, and he tells them, now that I have received this power, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Notice he doesn't say go and baptize in the names. He says that go and baptize in the name. So the name there is singular, but what it denotes is a plurality of the majesty that is contained in the Father, in the Son, in the Holy Spirit. Christ has received the power of the Father. He has received uh, uh, the power of the Holy Spirit, and he says that in him there is this fullness, and so therefore go outside there and baptize, and look what he says in verse 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. And so let us look at inspiration, what it has on this word. Let us look at uh, the inspiration, what it has to say in this word. Does it say actually in three gods? Does it say in uh, uh, that go and baptize in three gods? Uh, I want us to notice something in uh, in 12 MR 260. Uh, point two. Speaking of the verse, twelve MR, and uh, this is it. Twelve MR, my sister, two sixty point two. It says. Before he left them, Christ gave his followers a positive promise that after his ascension, he would send them the Holy Spirit. Go ye therefore, he said, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, 
And there it says, inspiration says, a personal being and of the Son, a personal Savior and of the Holy Ghost sent from heaven to represent Christ. So, Sister White, under inspiration, quoting the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 19, 20, he doesn't speak about three gods or God the Father, God the Son, or God the Holy Spirit, but he, 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 he speaks of what the verse means under inspiration. Why are they to teach in the threefold name? They are te to teach in the threefold name, that is the name of the Father, that is a personal God, and Sister White is so clearly, you can see it on your screen, the Father is a personal God, and in the name of the Son, a personal Savior, and of the Holy Ghost sent from heaven to represent Christ, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world, Matthew 28, 19, 20. And she continues to say, this positive assurance was given to the disciples to be given to all who should believe on him to the close of his, this earth's history. Christ desired his disciples to understand that he will not leave them orphans. He says, I'll not leave you comfortless. He declared, I'll come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But you see me, because I live, you, sh you shall live also. Verses 18 and 19. A precious, glorious assurance of eternal life. Even though he was to be absent, their relation to him was to be that of a child to it is parents. So Sister White is so clear under inspiration, saying that in the name of the Father means a personal God in the name of the Son, it means uh, a personal Savior and of the Holy Ghost, it is a representative of Christ himself. It is a representative of Christ himself. So this verse doesn't actually prove anything to do with the Trinity, only what it proves that there are three which are mentioned, which is the, the Father, a personal God, the Son, a personal Savior, and the Holy Ghost sent from heaven to represent Christ. And we found out that uh, yesterday, who the Holy Spirit or where the Holy Spirit comes, it is the Spirit of the Father, which is shed forth to us through the Son. And there is no harm in looking at this verse once again, that where does the Holy Spirit actually come from? Go with me to the book that we read the, yesterday, the book of Acts chapter 2, the book of uh, Acts chapter 2, verses 33. This Holy Spirit, where does it come from? Is it another being that is being mentioned in Matthew chapter uh, 28 verse 19. Let us look at the Bible once again where the Holy Spirit comes from. Um, the book of Acts chapter 2 verses 33. Acts chapter 2 verses 33 and I have it there. Therefore being by the right hand of God exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost he has shed forth this which you now see and hear. So Christ received the promise of the Holy Ghost and shed it unto us. The book of Titus, let us go to the book of Titus. Where does the Holy Spirit come from in this scenario? Why the people should be baptized in the Spirit? And I'll be dealing with this verse in more detail, the book of Matthew chapter 28, verses 19. The book of Titus, Titus, brothers and sisters, chapter 3. Titus, chapter 3, verses 5 and verses 6. Verses 5 says, Not by works of righteousness, Titus chapter 3 verses 5, not by works of righteousness which we have done, 
but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the holy ghost which verse 6 which he shed on us abundantly through jesus christ our savior so the holy spirit is actually the spirit of god and uh it is the spirit of god and it is shared to the believers through our lord jesus christ who is our savior and so you see that go and baptize in the name it says that go and baptize in the name of the father the son and the holy ghost the father sheds the holy spirit the father is the personal god and he has given us his son by his blood we are actually washed away from sin and the father sheds forth his spirit through the son unto us as a regenerating aid so that we may be able to overcome sin and so you accept when you are baptized in the name of the father you accept that god is a personal god and when you in the name in the name of the son it is the personal savior and in the name of the holy ghost that is a representative of the father and the representative of the son as a regenerating power so you are receiving the fullness of the divinity from the father and from the son and from the holy ghost it, the, the holy spirit is given in the fullness of the godhead in the fullness of the divinity of the father and the son so that it be a re, a, a, a regenerating uh, power unto our life so the the book of uh, matthew chapter 28 verse verses 19 doesn't prove a trinity I, I, I like also you to see something uh in the book of uh, the mount of blessings mount of blessing page 100 and Mount of Blessing, page 132, paragraph 1. And uh, I like to put it on the screen so that we may share together. I like to put it on the screen. Bear with me so that we may be able to share this together. Yes, here it is. We are to be baptized in the name of the Father, a personal God, and in the name of Jesus Christ, a personal Savior, and in the Holy Ghost, a representative of the Father and the Son, it is the divine spirit of the Father being given unto us. Look at what it says in the Mount of Blessing, page 132, paragraph 1. If ye then, being human and evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Luke 11, 13. The Holy Spirit... Are you seeing that? The Holy Spirit, the representative of himself, is the greatest gift of all gifts. All good things are comprised in this. The Creator Himself can give us nothing greater, nothing better. When we beseech the Lord to pity us in our distress and to guide us by His Holy Spirit, He will never turn away our prayer. It is possible even for a parent to turn away from his angry child, but God can never reject the cry of the needy and longing heart. With what wonderful tenderness He has described His love, to those who in days of darkness feel that God is unmindful of them, this is the message from the Father's heart. 
Zion said, The Lord hath forsaken me, and my Lord hath forgotten me. Can a woman forget her sucking child, and she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. And so, now I, I want you to notice, if you are reading on your screen, if ye then being human and evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall you what? Your heavenly Father give what? To them that ask him. And now read the next thing. The Holy Spirit, the representative of who is the himself? The Father himself. It is the representative of the Father. We have always known that the Holy Spirit is the representative of Jesus Christ, is it? But here the quote says that it is the representative of the Father also. So the Holy Spirit is the representative of the Father and also it is the representative of the Son. And we have just read that the Father sheds unto us the Holy Spirit through his Son. And uh, look at Galatians chapter 4, verses 6. Galatians chapter 4, verses 6. Let us read this together. Galatians Chapter 4, verses 6. It says, And because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying. So what has been sent unto our hearts? The Spirit of the Son. And this Spirit of the Son, who is the source? The Father is the source because it says in Titus chapter 3 verse 6 that the Father has shed forth his spirit to us through his Son. And so because we are Son, he has sent us the spirit of the Son in our hearts. And so when we get baptized, what we receive is the spirit of the Father sent, shed to us through the Son. It is the spirit of the Father shed to us through the Son. This is also proved in uh, Desire of Ages. Look at Desire of Ages. Desire of Ages. Desire of Ages, page uh, 21. Paragraph 2. Desire of Ages. All things Christ has received from God, but he took to give. All things Christ has received from God, but he took to give. So in the heavenly courts, in the ministry for all, in his so in the heavenly courts, in his ministry for all created beings, through the beloved Son. The Father's life flows out to all. What? The Father's life flows out to? What is the Father's life? The Holy Spirit. And how do you know that the life of the Father is the Holy Spirit? First Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16 says that, Know ye not that you are the temple of who? Of, of God. And the Holy Spirit dwells in you. And so, just this point, all things Christ received from God, Desire of Ages 21.2, all things Christ received from God, but he took to give. So in the heavenly courts, in his ministry for all created beings, through the beloved Son, the Father's life flows out to all through the Son, it returns in praise and joyous service, a tide of love to the great source of all. So the great source of all is the Father. And he gives the life through the Son to us, and it returns to him in the same way. Now, somebody will start saying that the Holy Spirit is not life of the Father. But this is, uh, look at uh, the book of uh, John, John chapter 6. 
the book of John chapter 6 verses 63. John chapter 6 verses 63. Beloved, I hope you have your Bibles, you have your notebooks, you are writing these things. John 6, 63 says, it is the spirit that quickeneth. Are we seeing that? The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So the spirit because we know that the word is the carrier of the Holy Spirit, the spirit is life. And we have been just told from the Father, the life flows through the Son unto us. So um, in, uh, in his uh, presentation, Pastor Marambi saying that uh, the book of uh, Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 proves a trinity of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Actually, this verse doesn't prove, but it just tells us the ones or what is involved in our baptism and what is involved in our salvation. We have the Father who is a personal God according to 12 MR 260 paragraph 2. He is a personal God, and we have Jesus Christ, who is a personal Savior, and we have the Holy Spirit, which is the representative of the Father and the Son, and it is the Spirit of the Father, the life of the Father, which is shared unto us through His Son. But I want to take this uh, to another level uh, in the book of... Uh, uh, in the book of... Uh, Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. And uh, I hope you will be benefited by this pre presentation. Uh, while looking at the book of Matthew, it, like, it has a three, and yes, I agree, it is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and we understand how this is. But... Um, uh, frequently, we have triads used in the Gospel of Matthew, and uh, uh, we have to look at how uh, it is used in uh, uh, various uh, places. And uh, uh, this is what, uh, when, when, we, when you look at uh, Matthew in, in totality, he said that, Three always represent the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, but this is not the case. And uh, when uh, you look like uh, at the book of Matthew, chapter 1, verses 2 to 17, the, 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 the genealogy of Jesus Christ itself is split in three lots of 14 generations. And uh, uh, in Matthew, chapter 1, verses 20, 2 to 2, verses, chapter 1, verses 20, and chapter 2, verse 13, you find that Gabriel comes three times to Joseph. The wise man brings three gifts, and we have three temptations in the wilderness. Jesus' ministry is composed of teaching, preaching, and healing. And uh, uh, we have uh, three examples of petition, ask, seek, and knock. Uh, and uh, th there is a myriad of three in the Bible, but this always does not prove that actually this is a trinity, but it proves uh, economically how God uh, works in, uh, in our life. And so there are several trees that appear in the word of God. And so when it says that baptize in the threefold name, it doesn't mean that baptize them in the trinity, but it just means the working of God through his son and the representation of the Holy Spirit. And so, actually, the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 19, doesn't prove any trinity. So, how should we understand the triad in the book of Matthew, chapter 28, 19? The final words of Jesus Christ in this gospel account to a span the last three verses, the Great Commission is sandwiched between two statements from Jesus from which it takes its impetus. You find that 
the the most important thing that is written there after baptism is that um, Jesus says that power has been given unto me. In the middle, he inserts how that power or who that powers are, and then it goes to law, I'll be with you. So the subject in this, uh, the context and the subject in the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 19 and 20, is Jesus Christ himself and um, uh, how he will be working with the Father and how he will be working with his Holy Spirit. And Jesus had been just withdrawn from them. And so he needed to give them another comforter, another distinct personality of himself, so that he may abide with them. And uh, i like to share something in the book of Desire of Ages before uh, I continue uh, with this uh, at a more uh, uh, larger scale. Uh, the book of Desire of Ages seen I want us to look at Desire of Ages, page 671.2. And why Jesus is talking about the Father working through Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ working in us through his Spirit. It says that, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father, a personal God, Jesus Christ, a personal Savior, and the Holy Spirit as a representative of the Father and the Son as a regenerating power. Look at Desire of Ages, 671.2 what it says this is uh, and this is one of the quotes that is used to defend trinity but a, 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 a fair reader of the spirit of prophecy will see that actually this is not a trinitarian quote desire of ages 671.2 this is what it says in describing to his disciples the work the office work of the holy spirit jesus sought to inspire them with the joy and hope that inspired his own heart. He rejoiced because of the abundant help he had provided for his church. The Holy Spirit was the highest of all gifts that he could solicit from his Father for the exaltation of his people. The Spirit was to be given as a regenerating agent, and without this, the sacrifice of Christ would have been of no avail. Now, I'm reading from Desire of Ages 671.2. You have it? You are still searching for it. It's okay. She says, and I want us to capture this very well, because this is a quote that has been used to prove Trinity. But actually, it doesn't prove Trinity. Look at what the quote says now, and I'd like us to listen to it. It says, The power of evil had been strengthening for centuries, and the submission of men to this satanic captivity was amazing. Sin could be resisted and overcome only through the mighty agency of the third person, of the Godhead. Who will come with no modified power? Sin could be resisted by what? The third person of the Godhead. Who will come with no modified energy? Now you will ask yourself, who is the third person of the Godhead? Is that a fair question to ask? Yes, sin could be overcome by the third person of the Godhead. And it says, who will come with no modified energy, but in the fullness of divine power? It is the spirit that maketh effectual what has been wrought out by the world's redeemer. It is the spirit that the heart is made pure. So the third person of the Godhead is the spirit, is it? He said that the third person of the God, sin could be resisted by the third person of the Godhead. And she says that it is the spirit that makes effectual what has been wrought out by the world's redeemer. It is the spirit that the heart is made pure. Through the Spirit, the believer becomes a partaker of divine nature. And listen now, she says, Christ has given his Spirit as a divine power to overcome all hereditary and cultivated tendencies to evil 
and to impress his own character upon his church. So the third person of the Godhead, which would make a person overcome sin, we are told it is the divine power, the spirit of Jesus Christ. Desire of Ages 671.2. And so the book of Matthew's brethren does not prove a trinity of any kind of God the Father, God the Son, or the God the Holy Spirit, but it proves an economic uh, uh, three that will work for our salvation. That is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They are regenerating power in our life, and it doesn't prove that is a trinity. And so Christ says, all authority has been given to me. Go ye therefore and make disciples. In this book of Matthew chapter 28 verse 19, there is a chiastic structure of it, of those who understand a chiastic structure. There is the beginning of the context of a passage, and there is the middle point, and there is the end, but the strength is put in the middle. And so, going into the world is the beginning of that passage, and then in the middle, baptizing, and then at the end, it says that I am the one. And so, what is said at the beginning and at the end strengthens what is in the middle. So at the above, we have Jesus Christ commissioning the people to go because all power has been given to him. At the end, he repeats in another way the first statement, I will be with you. So it is not another person that is with the people, but it is Jesus Christ himself with is working with his people, but in a different realm. And so... Uh, I like also to show why they should be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Jesus had just told them in John chapter 14 that um, uh, he goes away, but uh, uh, he will send his Holy Spirit. We are looking at the book of Matthew chapter 28 verse 19, why you should be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And this doesn't prove uh, a trinity statement. Uh, I, I want us also to look at um, the way this one is put out. Uh, look at uh, let me see Jesus Christ gives his spirit as a regenerating power something uh, Reflecting Christ, RC 129.2. Reflecting Christ, page 129.2. It says that, uh, that Christ should manifest himself to them and yet be invisible to the world was a mystery to the disciples. They could not understand the words of Christ in their spiritual sense. They were thinking of the outward, visible manifestation. They could, not, they could not take in the fact that they could have the presence of Christ with them and yet be unseen by the world. They did not understand the meaning of spiritual manifestation. So, when we are baptized, we receive the Spirit of Christ after believing that we have the Father, a personal God, and Jesus Christ, a personal Savior, and the Holy Spirit, their spirit as a regenerating power, as a regenerating uh, power. And so to me, this theology that uh, actually the Holy Spirit baptizing them in the name of the Father and in the Son and the Holy Spirit uh, it does not prove a trinity. 
but actually it just tells us how the Father and the Son works and the Holy Spirit works when we receive uh, uh, the Father as a personal God and Jesus Christ as the Son and the Holy Spirit as the representative of them. And so, Matthew chapter it was reflecting Christ page 129 paragraph 2 Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 doesn't prove the trinitarian theology or that the three are actually three gods. We should be careful uh, in reading, in not reading what is not written. We should be careful not to read what is not written, but we should narrow ourselves to what is written. There is a danger in adding to what is, is not spoken. And so, you find that uh, after they had been told to go and baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, we don't find anywhere the disciples baptizing in that formula. And this is not to say that now Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 is a superior verse because the prophet has used it. But we find them baptizing in the name of Jesus Christ. Like uh, they, they, they are told go and baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And they do not go to baptize in that name, but uh, they go baptizing with another formula like in acts chapter 2 verses 21 we read and it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the lord shall be saved acts chapter 2 verses 38 let me try and uh, put this on the screen so that uh, we can take the verses acts acts chapter 2 verse 21 says and it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the lord shall be saved acts chapter 2 verse 38 Eight, and Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 3 verse 6, But Peter said, I have no silver and gold, but what I do have I give unto you in the name of Jesus Christ, rise and walk. Acts chapter 8 verses 12, But when they believed, Philip, as he preached good news about the kingdom of God, and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. Acts chapter 9, verses 27 to 28. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared to them how on the road he had seen the Lord who spoke to him and how at Damascus he had preached boldly in the name of Jesus Christ. So he went in and out among them in Jerusalem preaching boldly in the name of the Lord. Acts chapter 10, verse 48. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked him to remain for some days. And so you, you see that actually when they had been told, go and baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, they are baptizing in the name of Jesus Christ. Did the disciples disobey the commandment of Jesus Christ, go ye and baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost? No, I don't believe they disobeyed that. But they understood what actually Christ meant. He didn't mean go and baptize in the three gods. That's why baptizing them in the name of Jesus Christ, they are seeing themselves fulfilling the uh, act, uh, the commission they were given in the book of Acts chapter in the book of Matthew chapter uh, 28 verses uh, 19. Uh, again, we find that uh, 
Acts chapter 10 verse 48, and he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked him to remain for some days. And uh, everything they did in the name of Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 19 verse 5, it says, on hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And those are the baptisms that are recorded that uh, the disciples did and they were done in the name of Jesus Christ. And so the disciples understood that they, they were unfamiliar with this Trinity concept that people are saying that uh, Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 proves a Trinity. People have gone into the habits of adding something that is not written uh, uh, in the name of having concepts. So, what is the meaning of the phrase in the name? In this last segment, I want to look at um, what does it mean in the name? What actually does it mean uh, in that name this is my what i labor in this last session what does uh so what is the meaning of the phrase in the name when you look at the phrase itself it has several different nuances of meaning depending on the context it can mean a proper name that is a surname a family name title or appellation the same word is used for each of these separate categories in english it can mean in the character we always know that the name holds the character and so it says that go and baptize in the name of the father the character of the father go and baptize them in the name of the son the character of the son go and baptize them in the name of the holy spirit the character of the holy spirit and uh, uh every time the spirit in the Bible is uh, represented in an emblem emblematical way of it is kindness. It is represented like a dove, the character of a dove. So in the name, what is in the name is what is in important. Most of the time when you are uh, find in the name, it goes with the character. It can also mean in the authority of which name is invested and the power. A name carries repetition. And so, uh, when we are baptized in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, when we are baptized in this threefold name, it comes with the power and authority of the name or the character of the one which you are being baptized in. You look at uh, the book of Acts chapter 3. In the book of Acts chapter 3, uh, Peter and John are preaching in the synagogue, in the gates of the synagogue, and a crippled man is at the temple. Uh, uh, and they start preaching and a crowd is assembled. And uh, we find Peter and John telling this man that... Uh, we don't have silver and gold, but uh, what we have, we shall give you in the name of Jesus Christ, stand up and walk. So the name comes with the power and authority. So the name of Jesus Christ invokes the power of Jesus Christ. When we are baptized in the name of the of, of, of the Father, we invoke the power of God in our life. We invoke the power of Jesus Christ in our life, and we, we invoke the power of the Holy Spirit in our life to be guided by this divine power so that uh, we may be able to walk in, uh, in uh, uh, our spiritual journey. So, in Acts chapter 4, verse 12, also, we find something, and there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. So, in the name of Jesus Christ, we, we are saved, in the power of that name. And uh, we found out yesterday 
It was in uh, Exodus chapter 20, verse 23. 23, verse 20. That uh, it says, I sent an angel before you, is it? And beware not to provoke him, because he will not pardon your sins, for my name is in him. So what was in the name of this angel? What does it mean that my name is in the angel? The power and authority, is it? Because it says that I sent an angel. Beware not to provoke him because he will not forgive your sins or iniquity. For my name is in, in him. So the name is connected with forgiving of sin, is it? And so how can sin be overcome? By the third person of the Godhead. And what is this? third person of the Godhead, the divine power of Jesus Christ, which is the Holy Spirit. So in the name is in the power. My power to forgive sins is in him. Are you seeing that? Yeah. <laughs> or it is difficult. My name is in him to forgive sin. And sin could be overcome by power, third person of the Godhead. And Christ has given his divine power, which is the Holy Spirit. So in the name can mean either character, power, or authority. I, I hope we agree on that. Yes. And uh, so the name, the name means power. So the proper name of Jesus Christ. And we found that uh, they were told, go and baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now, this is important. Let it not slip your ears, okay? And listen carefully. They are told, go and baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And they baptize in which name? The name of Jesus, okay? And the name of the Father is in Jesus Christ. Are you seeing that? And that name is, we found, what is the name that he was given? Jehovah, is it? And what does Jehovah mean? Eternal present. <laughs> this is interesting. I want you to get the what is being spoken in the book of Matthew and what the disciples are doing, okay? They are told, go and baptize in the name of who? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. But they go baptizing in the name of? And the name of the Father is in the Son. And what is this name that the Son has been given? Jehovah is the name given to Jesus Christ, the Lord is our Savior. Are you seeing that? So they are baptizing in the name of who? Don't fail this, my audience. Now let me try again. They are told, baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. They go baptizing in the name of who? Jesus, is it? And then we find that Christ has been given the name, which is Jehovah, that the Lord is my Redeemer, the Lord is my Savior, is it? So, which name are they baptizing in? The name he has been given is the name Jehovah. But here is, simply put, Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus Christ has been given the name Jehovah, and it means eternal presence, is it? That is what it says. Yes, in the name, Jehovah encompasses all this, our Redeemer, our Savior, and eternal presence. And so, it encompasses all this in the name. So, 
They are baptizing in the name of Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ, in him he has this name Jehovah, which means what? Eternal present. So, I want you to look this. Did they obey the, obey the commandments or disobey? This is the tricky part. They are baptizing in the name of Jesus Christ, but you remember that in that name, the name of the Father is in it, okay? Which is Jehovah. So, while they are baptizing in the name of Jesus Christ, they are not ne negating the Father. Are you seeing that? Because the Father is in the Son. And then, the name Jehovah, which is in the Son, means eternal present. Is it? Now, this is, this is the point I wanted to get out. Psalms 139. Psalms 139 verse 7. Psalms 139 verse 7. What does it say? Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Whither shall I flee from so, the presence of the Father is what? The Spirit. And Jehovah means what? Are you seeing that? So, if they are baptizing in the name of Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ, in him there is Jehovah, it means that he has the Father, and he has the Spirit, because the Spirit is the eternal presence. Are you seeing that? So, if I ascend up in heaven, thou art there, and if I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there, if I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea. So, the eternal presence of the Father is the Spirit. That is, is his omnipresence. That is his omnipresence. And uh, I, I don't want you to take my word for it, okay? I, I don't want you to take uh, is this uh, desire of, of of ages? Oh, let me get you this just to prove that the spirit is their omnipresence. Uh, I'm looking for a place where he speak of a uh, It's not essential for you to know what is it's not essential for you to know what is the yes look at 14 MR 179.2 this is what I'm looking at don't lose me on this it says that go and baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And they go baptizing in the name of Jesus Christ. And we find that in Jesus Christ, there is the name of God, which is Jehovah. And the name Jehovah means eternal presence, okay? And so, uh, and we find out that uh, 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 the presence of God is his spirit. And so when they are baptizing in the name of Jesus Christ, they are really baptizing in the threefold name. It says in the of Ages, in, in uh, 14 MR 179.2, it is not essential for you to know and be able to define just what the Holy Spirit is. Christ tells us that the Holy Spirit is the comforter and the comforter is the Holy Ghost. 
the spirit of truth, which the Father shall send in my name. Are you seeing that? I will pray the Father, and he shall give you a comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he does what? Dwelleth with you, but he shall be in, in you. And then he say, now, I hope you have been following the quote. The comforter, the spirit. This refers to of the spirit of Christ called what? The comforter. So go baptize them in the name. That is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And they baptize in the name of Jesus Christ and they is missing the Father, they is missing the Holy Spirit. Are you seeing that? But we find that in the name, Christ has the name of the Father, which is Jehovah, and Jehovah means eternal presence, and the eternal presence is the Holy Spirit. It is their omnipresence. So I, I don't see that the disciples were negating to follow the commandment of God. Maybe I can just put something on the screen of, of what we are talking about uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 1, verses 4. Look at this. Jehovah is the name given to Christ. Behold, God is my salvation. Now, if you have the bookmarks, you can just type Jesus Christ, full columns, and then uh, 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 Hebrews chapter 1, verse 4. But uh, this is in ST, May 3, 1899, paragraph 18. You have it on your screen? ST, May 3, I hope the people viewing or the people listening, they can be able to get this ST, May 3, Signs of the Time, May 3, 1899, paragraph 18. ST, I'll wait on you. ST, May 3, 1899, paragraph 18. Are you there? Yes, and... Uh, I want you to tie this with the book of Matthew chapter Matthew chapter 1 verses 21. I want you to see how this is beautiful. They are told, go and baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And they go baptizing in the name of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ in his name, he has this name, Jehovah, which means God is our salvation. Uh, Jehovah is the name given to Christ. Behold, God is my salvation. Are you seeing that? Now, Matthew chapter 1, verses 21. What does it say? And he shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall do what? Save his people from there. So what does the name Jesus mean? Savior or? Tie with the quote. Jehovah. <laughs> that is it. This is here a little, there a little. Are you seeing that? Is it something forced there? No, it is not forced there. Look at it again. Jehovah is the name given to Christ. Behold, God is my salvation. Okay? And then in Matthew chapter 1, verses 21, And he shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus Christ, for he shall save the people from their sins. And the name Jehovah is the name of who? The Father. And he has given the Son. And so in, in the baptism, this is not a Trinitarian thing, but it is the qualitative name that we have been given for salvation, for baptism, to denote salvation. The Father is in for our salvation, the Son is in for our salvation, and the omnipresent Spirit is there to guide us into this conviction and salvation. Let us go back to 14 MR. 14 MR. The quote that uh, we have 
just been having on the screen. It was 14 MR. One. 179.3. No, it was not 14 MR, 179.3. It's not essential for you. Yes, 179.2. It says it's not essential to know what is the Holy Spirit. And it says that this Holy Spirit refers to the omnipresence of the Spirit of Christ called what? The Comforter. And are you seeing the verses that has been quoted there? John 14, 16, and 17. So when Christ says that he shall send forth the Comforter, what is he essentially sending? His omnipresence. His own omnipresence. And his, this omnipresence, where did Christ receive from? From the Father. Because we are told that the Spirit is shed from the Father to us through the, the Son. And so Matthew chapter 28, uh, verse 19, as we continue to see, it doesn't say, it doesn't talk uh, about um, a trinity, but it talks about the power and the authority that these uh, are invested in. And so the statement is has something to guard with universal authority because 18 says that all power has been given uh, uh, to me in heaven and on earth. Uh, and so it, it also reveals the source of the authority because all power has been given to me. Who has given him? The Father has given to him. And then now he commissions them that in the same power that he has received from the, power, from the Father, now they can go and do the work. Let me see if uh, uh, I can wrap this up. So, in coming back to the book of Matthew, we can see that Jesus' name is the one which fulfills all the contextual and uh, 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 the commission that uh, he was uh, speaking about because uh, they go in the book of Acts and start baptizing in the name of Jesus Christ. And this is in fulfillment to the commission in Matthew chapter 28. Are you seeing that? What they are doing in Acts chapter, in, in the whole of book of Acts, what the disciples are doing in the whole book of Acts is in fulfillment of what they have been told to do in the book of Matthew chapter 28 verse 19. And so they go in the name of Jesus Christ. And in this name, it is invested the authority of the Father and the Holy uh, Spirit. And so, uh, brothers and sisters, we cannot say that uh, uh, Matthew chapter uh, 28 verse 19 proves a trinity. It will be reading in it something that is not there, but we found actually in totality what actually the commission is all about. And uh, just uh, maybe in the closing remarks, Jesus represents the Father having been invested with authority from him. The name Jesus, which is given by heaven, Matthew 121 literally contains the name of the Father. Have we proved that? Jehovah, Yeshua, Yeshua in Hebrew, literally, which means uh, uh, Yahweh, which means he saves. And so the name Jesus Christ contains the name of the Father. And in the name of the Father, we have the omnipresent, the present, the, the omnipresent, which is the Spirit. And so Jesus Christ, and it is interesting also to look at the book of Matthew in this context. Jesus Christ represents the office of the Son, is it? Yes, go and baptize in the name of the Son. Don't fear to say yes or amen, because sometimes we, we think that we are trapped. So Jesus Christ represents the office of the Son. Jesus Christ is known as the Son of God and the Son of Man. And also, Jesus Christ represents the office of the Holy Spirit. Is it a true statement? How do we prove that? Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians, and you know the verse I'm looking for. Can you guess? 3 verses 17. 
Jesus Christ represents the office of the Son. He is the Son of God, is it? And Christ also represents the office of the Holy Spirit. Look at it. 2 Corinthians 3, 17. How now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is what? There is liberty. So you find that Christ also represents the office of the Holy Spirit. In him is the name Jehovah, and it represents the Father. It represents his omnipresence, and his omnipresence is the Holy Spirit. So, Jesus Christ can act in and is acting in the name of the Son. He represents that office, and also he represents the office of the Holy Spirit. We are told he stands as the second Adam. He is a quickening spirit, and in 2 Corinthians 3, 17, he is that spirit. The Lord is that spirit. And then, do uh, you know something interesting? Jesus Christ represents the Father in that office. True or false? Behold the children which the Father has given unto me. And if you have the children, if you have children, what are you called? A father. Or if you are a she, then you are a mother. Or you can call you can be called a guardian. So Jesus Christ represents this threefold name. The name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Spirit. So, the Great Commission is carrying the authority, the power of the Father, and the Father has invested in the Son this authority. And then Jesus Christ, by his abiding presence, he sends uh, the people to do uh, uh this work. And uh, look at uh, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. We are told, For unto us a child is born, a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be Wonderful, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of so look at closely at Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Christ is embodied with the threefold name. Are you seeing that? Look at Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For unto us, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So let us... Jesus Christ is representing this office, three office. The first name is the Son, is it? And then it says that the wonderful counselor. Who is the counselor? The Holy Spirit, mighty God, and then everlasting Father. So in Christ is embodied the threefold name. Are you now starting to see that it's not something Trinitarian, but it is the qualities embodied in this name that uh, Matthew is trying to, uh, uh, to deal with. And so Christ, uh, in Matthew chapter 28, verses 19, actually uh, has this uh, threefold name. And so uh, I like to rest my case there and uh, there's a lot that can be spoken of this verse and uh, baptism is uh, a, a requisite for conversion it helps us understand the ones who are working for our salvation and so when we are baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we are united in the great powers of heaven. We are united in the great powers of heaven. We are not united into a Trinitarian God because that is not what is being spoken in the word of God. And so... I hope this helps us and sheds more light uh, on the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 
19. And uh, we have to uh, uh, accept that um, the father gave his son and he sheds his spirit through the son. And when we are baptized, we partake. Second Peter 1 4 it says that we partake of the divine nature. We partake in divine nature. And that about does it. And so we do not deny the Father, the Son, or the Holy Spirit. But uh, what I'm saying, we have to understand the thought inspiration in the book of Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 and read the verse literally rather than reading into it what is not there. And uh, th there's something I want you just to look at in closing the Acts of Apostle, page 28.2. Acts AA 28.2. AA 28.2. The disciples were to carry their work forward in Christ's name. Their every word and act was to fasten attention on his name. As possessing that vital power by which sinners may be saved, their faith was to center in him who is the source of mercy and power. In his name, they would present their petitions to the Father and they will receive answer. They were to baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And look at what the prophet says. Christ's name was to be their what? Which were their badge of distinction, their bond of union, the authority of their course of action, and the source of their, their success. Nothing was to be recognized in his kingdom that did not bear his name and superscription. And so the... Uh, the point is that um, the threefold name, uh, actually, when they did it in the name of Jesus Christ, they represented, actually, it carried uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ acts in those three offices. And so, I urge brothers and sisters to get hold of their Bible and uh, and uh, I like to close with this uh, I'd like to close with these sentiments. <clears throat> DA 178.2 Now he saw the tide of popularity turning away from himself to the Savior, speaking about John the Baptist. Day by day the crowds about him lessened. When Jesus came from Jerusalem to the region about Jordan, the people flocked to hear him. The number of his disciples increased daily. Many came for baptism, and while Christ himself did not baptize, he sanctioned the administration of the ordinance by his disciples. Thus he set his seal upon the mission of his forerunner. But the disciples of John looked with jealousy upon the growing popularity of Jesus. They stood ready to criticize his work, and it was not long before they found occasion. A question did what? Arose. 
a question. I'm reading from DA 178.2. A question arose between them and the Jews as to whether baptism availed to clean the soul from sin. They maintain that baptism of Jesus differed essentially from that of who? John. Soon they were in dispute with Christ's disciples in regard to the form of what? Words proper to use at baptism. Where is smiling? Because this is a controversy also among us, is it? So, soon they were in dispute with Christ's disciples in regard to the form of words proper to use at baptism. And finally, as to the right of the letter, that is the disciples to baptize at all. The disciples of John had declared that all men were coming to Christ, but with, uh, I'm now in desire of ages 181.2. You can move to 181.2. This is, uh, we are closing. The disciples of John had declared that all men were coming to Christ, but with clearer insight, John said, no man receiveth his witness, so few were ready to accept him as the Savior from sin. But he that hath received his witness has said his, his, set his seal to this, that God is true, John 3.33. 3. He that believeth on the Son hath an everlasting life, no need of as to whether Christ's baptism or John's purified from what? It is the grace of Christ that gives life to the soul apart from Christ's baptism like any other service is of worthless form. Unless we are converted to Jesus Christ, even if we are baptized in the threefold name, it will avail us nothing. And so there I end the last part that was hanging yesterday on the book of Matthew chapter 28 verses 19. And in the name, it shows the character and power and authority. And the book of Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 doesn't prove any, doesn't prove any Trinitarian doctrine or any three gods. Otherwise, it proves the power that has been invested in the threefold name. And we found that the disciples baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and this was not against the commandment, but they understood that in the name of Jesus, there was the name of the Father, which is Jehovah, is our salvation. And in the name of Jehovah, it means eternal also, eternal presence, and the eternal presence of the Father and the Son, as we found in uh, uh, 14 MR 179.2, it is the omnipresence, which is the Spirit. So, God bless us. God be with you until uh, next time when we shall be doing the next presentation. We can pray in closing. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for thy grace that has carried us through in this presentation. And we continue praying that, Lord, you may continue teaching us. There is a solemn warning in Revelation that uh, we should not add or remove of the words that are in the Bible. And Heavenly Father, I pray that uh, we may not insert anything and make people to read what is not in the Bible. But Lord, we may read as it is written. We may not go about by fables and traditions of men, but um, we may meditate upon it is written. Every time you say, how read it thou? And today you continue asking us the same thing. May thy will continue prevailing in our lives. May you teach us to honor thee and honor thy father. And may the Holy Spirit always be a comforter in our lives. Take us through uh, this uh, night. And those who are in the daylight, may you take them through. And above all, Heavenly Father, may you save us and put a seal on our heart. Take our hearts and seal it for the courts above that Lord it may not be given for anything else. The name be glorified, Heavenly Father. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.